Cheryl. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to Bordeaux. Um, as uh, Cheryl said, my name is Mary. I am American-born, born in Texas, uh, but I've been drinking and living in Bordeaux for over 20 years. So today, we're not only talking about Bordeaux, I'll tell you a little bit about Bordeaux in general, but what we're really talking about today is the Medoc. Bordeaux as, as a whole has a, a reputation for being a little bit complicated to say the least. So if you haven't been to Bordeaux yet, I recommend you come because uh, getting to know a vineyard, uh, the best way to do it is to go there and to see it in situ, uh, to sample the wine with the food. And that, that is really the best way to get to know it, to meet the people and to talk about it. So um, before we go on, what I want to do is ask you a very quick question. What comes to mind when you think of Bordeaux? Um, if you haven't been to Bordeaux yet, you might have some ideas. Now I'm talking Bordeaux, the town, Bordeaux, the wine, the wine region. Some people think of big, great chateaus. We do big, great chateaus in Bordeaux, not quite like the, the Loire Valley chateaus, um, but we do have great big chateaus. Some people think blended wines and particularly cabs. We do blend our wines in Bordeaux. That's just what we do. And in a moment, I'll explain to you why. Some people think our wine is expensive, old fashioned, fuddy duddy. We do have lots of expensive wine, uh, but only 5% of our, our wines are of that um, elite classification, which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, most of our wines are, are uh, highly affordable and attainable, um, even by the time it gets to the United States. So what I'm here to do today is to help you think again um, in terms of Bordeaux being uh, big old fashioned, fuddy-duddy, expensive, blended Cabernet wines. Yes, we do have um, old fashioned chateaus, but we also have quite a lot of innovation, a lot of modern architecture um, and a lot of innovation in the cellars as well. Uh, the ISVB, the Enology Faculty, is one of France's first and foremost research institutes. First of all, let's have a quick look at Bordeaux as a whole. But Bordeaux is, Bordeaux's big. Uh, it's over 273,000 acres. Um, we have about 5,660 properties, domains, chateaus, uh, wine growers, basically. Those are 2018 figures. Uh, just say 10, 10 years ago, it was about 17,000 wine growers. And when I first moved here about 20 years ago, it was more like 20,000. Now, it's not because we're ripping up vines that the number of wine growers is, is falling. Um, it's purely because a lot of the bigger guys are swallowing up and buying up some of the smaller vineyards. So the number of wine growers is going down. Therefore, the average size of a vineyard, which is about 45 acres, um, is growing. So it used to be a lot smaller. Bordeaux is the largest fine wine area in France. And that leads me to the Appalachians, which I'll explain to you in just a second. Um, it's five times the size of Burgundy and two and a half to three times the size of the Rhone. So in, um, in Bordeaux, we have 65 Appalachians. Now these are uh, the geographically delimited areas, which portray a certain typicity. So we talk about terroir. You all know that terroir is the influence of the soil, um, the climate, the microclimate, the disposition. Are you flat? Are you on the slopes? Um, terroir makes up all of that, as well as the human factor, which is uh, how we treat the vines, how we prune and all of that stuff. So they're geographical areas where, as you can see on the map here, we draw lines around these different areas. Um, and on this Appalachians map, and this is one of my favorite tools in uh, learning about the wines of Bordeaux, you have the Appalachian names just here, and you can see each of them has a dot next to it. Now that's the color of wine that we make in those areas. You can see here in the Medoc, which is this purple area here to the, uh, to the Western side. In the Medoc, we don't have any Appalachians for white wines. We do make white wine in the Medoc. Chateau Margaux makes a fabulous white wine. So we have red wine Appalachians, dry white, sweet white, rosé and cremant, which you know is the sparkling wine because you all know that Champagne is an Appalachian and you can, next to Paris, and you can only make Champagne in that Appalachian. So everything else is a cremant. 
So this concept of uh, Appalachian d'origine contrôlée or controlled origin of Appalachian started in 1936. Um, it was under pressure from the uh, Ministry of Agriculture and the local wine syndicates to set rules. Um, you know, in France, we love rules and regulations. Uh, it set all of our rules and regu regulations. It, it governs absolutely everything from the growing of the vine all the way up to the bottling. Um, and that's the whole Appalachian system is run by the INAO, the National Institute of Appalachians of Origin. Um, so they set all of the rules and regulations and they tell us what great varieties we can use, what we can do uh, and that sort of thing. So um, you can see in Bordeaux that we have two rivers they, uh, and those rivers, we'll talk a lot more about those in a moment and they're very important. You have the Dordogne River here to the northern side and you have the uh, Garonne River to the southern side. They join just about here and that's just about at Margo and they form the Gironde estuary. Um, the Dordogne be begins in the Massif Central to the east and the Garonne begins in the Pyrenees down here to the southeast uh, and they flow out towards the Atlantic Ocean. That's why anything on the north and the east side is considered right bank and anything here basically on the left side is left bank. So you have left bank Medoc, this purple area, and the Grave and the sweet wine Sautern down here is on the left bank. And the right bank, Saint-Emilion, Pomerol, Fransac, the Cote wines, Cote means slopes, okay? So those are over here on the right bank. That's just to explain in case you didn't know what left and right bank was. So 